Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Left speaker done. Right speaker done. I'm measuring the sound of my room or calibrating the sound of my room right now. This is the microphone I'm using. This is the, um, the mic or the hardware that comes with the software to measure the sound of your room. And I think the software tried to approximate how far my monitors are. So it says it's three, like based on the sound of what it heard in the mic. So I'm gonna double check and see if it actually is doing anything. <laughs> Got a tape measure here. Wow. Yeah, it actually figured that out. Um, oops. I think it's like pretty much yeah, actually center to center, it is 42 inches. Oh my God, it works. Um, at least so far it's working. You gotta get it right, you know? All right, here we go. Like the ideal would be for these to be uh, equidistant. And right now they're just like, this line and this line is like an inch off, but I'm okay with that. That's the purpose of this software is to help adjust for that. So, um, here we go. Next. I'm like halfway through. <laughs> oh my god. To do a little recap, a little summary of what I'm doing, talk like in the closet or if you talk in the in a bathroom or a hallway, um, sound sounds different there. So every room has its own sound similarly. And so um, what I'm trying to do is neutralize my room so that uh, what I hear coming out of my speakers is is most likely to be uh, what the listener may hear when I make music and stuff. That makes sense. And so what I'm doing is um, there's a software that also comes with this microphone um, called Sonarworks, and it comes with uh, there's a mic, and then it's essentially measuring the sound of my room so that it can make adjustments to my speakers through software uh, in order to tweak the sound so that it's more neutral. Similarly, like if you were to paint a painting with like rose tinted glasses on, uh, you wouldn't, your, your painting might be a little off from what you thought you were actually painting, if that, if that makes sense. So what this is doing is trying to take those glasses off. So I'm wearing this ridiculous clamp on my, my neck so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. This is what I do for y'all. <laughs> um, yeah, but that way I can like be hands-free while I do this. And then you can see what I'm seeing. Touch ID calibration, but worse. Yes, exactly, Rob. That's exactly what this is, but way worse, especially when you deal with feedback from not turning direct monitoring off. So, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate uh, your y'all's patience, um, especially for those of you who came to my first version of this live stream, and I was like, there's just like feedback and fumbling and not sure what's happening. Uh, but now that's all results. Yay. Um, so I think I've just. I just measured like 37 or something points in my room using this mic um, that came all the way from Latvia in three days. Uh, oh, I think we get to see the results. Results. <laughs> you all joined at the right time because now I think I've finished the measurements and now we get to see what the results are. All right, so my left, oh, my right speaker was a little louder. You know why? Because I have a like a window wall closer to my right side than my left side, which is like the rest of my like this half of my apartment or whatever. So that makes sense. It figured that out. So light blue is my left speaker. 
and the dark blue is my right speaker. So yeah, I mean, slightly different measurements for each, which makes sense, especially considering the loudness difference and the fact that one speaker was a little closer to the wall than the other. Um, and it looks like we have at 100 hertz, a bit of a bump on both. And then we have like a dip here at like, I'm not sure what that is, but maybe like 800 or 800 hertz. And then, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna try to load up what it just measured. Oh yeah, here it is. Oh wow, okay. Um, it's cool too because it has, as you can see here, it has some of my uh, my headphones that I put in earlier, so it can also calibrate headphones because not all headphones sound the same, and so like no headphones are completely flat either. Like there's some headphones that are flatter or more neutral than others, but every headphone has its own sound as well. Um, so this also just like flattens everything out. I don't know if I'm making sense to y'all, but anyway, right. So the target is this white line to get everything flat and I guess I just play stuff now. This is my, for whatever reason, this is the track I like to listen to when I like listen to new speakers or like, I don't know, like a test song, you know, like a reference test song. I don't know why. Let's see. So this is on. LOL, Rob. <laughs> is Rob still here? Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, a jam box and a Subaru Carcero. Supposedly, after you use the software, you shouldn't need to reference on other things like that as much just because it's already flat. So it should sound pretty good on even like crappy speakers or whatever car stereo. I guess we'll see what happens uh, in reality or in practice, but that's part of the reason for me getting this is so that I don't have to reference my stuff in like 10 different places as much anymore. So we'll see. Uh, ooh, Jamie XX, gosh, I'll pull that up. I see why you get like a nice low end, but also. Oh, my gosh. oh I know this song. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this is a good song. It's a. Uh... <laughs> I love the samples he uses in this one, like the vocal samples. Love Jamie XX. I've seen him once in um, San Francisco. I think it was that out. Was it Outside Lands? Maybe or maybe it was. Treasure Island. I can't remember. Big fan. Big fan of his. Maybe really quickly, I will do like a before and after because I think that I don't know if you guys care about that, but I care about that. Okay, I'm going to turn it back on. It does sound flatter to me. It's less boomy, um, which is cool. It kind of like, uh, I think it'll take some, oh yeah, you can hear it too in the phone. Yeah, 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 here, I'll keep playing. Cause like, part of it. Yeah, exactly. There's the bass is like more boomy when it's not calibrating it. Um, and I think it'll take me a little bit to get used to cause I'm so used to hearing like, I, I do like hearing a lot of bass, but it's nice to actually be able to hear it flat. Uh, so in theory, and I, I do find that when I take my like demos and like works in progress that I'm working on and take it to like a car usually, usually the bass is too boomy. So that's probably why I'm like trying to do the math in my head, but like hopefully maybe that's will like mitigate it. But, um, Hey, Mariko. I, I'm glad that you could hear through the phone. I wasn't sure if you could, because I'm going to go to a different part of the song. Here we go. And then I'm going to 
just turn it. I'm gonna switch it off in the middle of the song. Wow, that's a big difference. Yeah, it does feel like I can really hear more. Uh, I feel like I can hear more textures actually that's happening in the song when the calibration's on versus off. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, wow, I, it's still just hitting me right now. I'm like, wow, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna try another song. I'm gonna go back to 15th step because this is what I'm used to hearing as a reference song for myself. Now I'm gonna enable it again. I could like feel the flatness, honestly. I can now feel the difference when certain parts of the spectrum are a little bit high. They're just, they're just a little louder and some are a little, like whether that's the low end or the high end. And then once I turn calibration on, it just feels, yeah, it feels flatter. It's like, I can feel, oh, wow, that's crazy. I'm just like mind blown right now, okay. Uh, like, I think it's especially apparent when I turn up the volume, cause then, I don't know, you can just like, when I switch between the two, it just feels like the calibrated one is just flatter. Like, I don't even know how else to describe it. It's like you can hear more types of sounds, but they're all level. That's, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, yeah, the mid bass is better. Uh, I feel like there's like some mid, some mids in general, like even on the higher mids that like are, are more tamed when it's calibrated. And also like, for me, it's making the stereo, I don't know if you could tell through, you know, this through the live stream, but like the stereo space actually is clearer to me too when it's calibrated. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, Joe, isn't that better for production? Uh, yeah, yeah, neutral cans are better. Like, that's the thing, it's like so interesting. Um, I was watching this talk recently from, uh, I think someone from, from Sonar Works was giving like a, a live stream sort of talk about like why these things, why these tools exist to neutralize sound. Neutral cans are preferred, but the thing is like no headphones are neutral. Like no headphones are completely neutral. Every single pair, even the uh, professional, grade ones have a little bit of like some kind of sound to them. Um, I guess either by design or maybe I guess by design because they have like a signature sound or something like that. Um, so like, and he was showing graphs of like the frequency spectrum of different headphones. Um, and so even headphones are not completely neutral and that's why they, they created the software to neutralize it more. Uh, and yeah, it is better for production because you want it to be flat and neutral Again, the analogy of like painting, uh, it's not like you're painting with, I guess a different set of colors almost. I use Audio-Technica, uh, what is it, what are these? I, I can never remember the names of these without looking at them. The ATH like M50X or something like that, I, I don't know. Yeah, like these are popular and I like them, I, I, but they are also colored. Like every pair of headphones are colored with different uh, t like sounds, like none of them are flat. Um, but like, if you like the sound of them, then it's great for listening to music, you know? Um, but like, if you're, if you are trying to make music that's neutral so that it, it can, it can then like fit most environments and still sound like how the person who made the music intended that you want it to be flat. Yeah. Cause it's like, otherwise you're making music in like a subjective environment or whatever, you know? And to be honest, I don't really mix with the, my headphones as much. I'm almost always mixing 
and mastering on my mount with my monitors because they, they just sound I guess more neutral than my headphones um and also I just like I don't like getting ear fatigue from wearing headphones for too long uh so I'll like reference I'll do like little checks on my headphones but I'm usually mixing or mastering and producing like on off of my my monitors which are these yeah Mariko yeah I love the audio techno like they they sound great um, they're just not flat or neutral for like mixing, but they're still pretty good. Like, you know, they're, you know, I think you can get the job done. It just won't be as flat or neutral sounding if you're mixing on the headphones. That was great. Thank you all for watching. Uh, thanks for your interest and curiosity in neutralizing the sound of rooms. I don't know if anyone else has any questions or anything, but otherwise I think we're pretty, pretty much done with this. Um, I'm really happy with how these how it turned out and uh i'm glad that i could tell the difference because it was kind of suck if like i spent this money and had this microphone shipped to me and then i'm like i can't hear the difference i don't think it's doing anything <laughs> so i'm glad um yeah definitely definitely a cool tool to have in the studio um hope y'all are having a great weekend thanks for tuning in um, this is fun. I, I kind of want to do more live streams. Um, I don't know what the next one will be, but it's fun to just, uh, hang out with y'all and, like, do stuff. <laughs> so eloquently said. Um, all right. Thanks for watching again. Bye. Have a great weekend.